I'm coming to you from the Great Hall at Hogwarts Castle, otherwise known as uh, McBride Hall in Bryn Mawr. You can see uh, Bryn behind me here. Actually, she's not really Bryn, she's the goddess Athena. All right, well, what I want to talk to you about is a heterogeneous Audi sequence. And so let me take that apart in reverse. First of all, a sequence. It's a sequence, that means that it's a, um, an ordered list of items that are in the order that the author wants you to consume them. Re recall that the difference between an, uh, uh, between an index and a sequence is not that it's an ordered list, they're both ordered lists. The difference is in how you are intended to consume them. Okay, so that's a sequence. It's different than an index, different than a hierarchy, and different than associations. It's the ordered list in the order that the author wants you to consume them. That's part A. Part A is that it's Audi meaning that the sequence is not embedded inside the items that it sequences. So in any sequence would be where all the information necessary to construct the sequence is sitting inside those items. Recall that between that and the difference, excuse me, recall the difference between that and an Audi sequence where the structure, the, in, the, the sequence structure is actually sitting outside the items that you want to index. So it's a sequence, order that the author wants you to consume them. It's Audi, the structure itself is outside the information that's being sequenced. And finally, it's heterogeneous. A heterogeneous sequence is one that can order items of any type. So we have five different types of items in our instance. This can order any of them, as opposed to a homogeneous sequence, which would mean it's only ordering items of the same type. So heterogeneous, items of any type, Audi, the structure is outside the content that's being sequenced. Sequence, meaning that it's an ordered list in the ordered list of items in the order the author wants you to consume them. All right, so let's look at how that's done in the sequence, excuse me, in the schema, in the instance, and in the transform. So starting with the schema, it's really pretty straightforward for each item in the sequence. Now, for each sequence item, not for each item that's being sequenced, but for each line, let's say, of the sequence, we have a title for that line. We have a description for that line that has our block model that I've talked about elsewhere. And we have an, uh, a ref ID. Now, notice it's, the ref ID is very generic. It just says ref ID. And that implies that it can reference any ID that's in the entire instance, as opposed to if it said item ref ID or profile ref ID or some particular kind of ref ID, which would imply that it only, it only refers to one kind of item. This is a generic ref ID. So the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the sequence itself is really pretty straightforward. The sequence as a whole has a title and a description, followed by a set, an ordered set of, um, of items that are being sequenced. Now notice what creates the sequence. We have a couple of different things that create sequences. Maybe we have an order attribute that would uh, explicitly specify the order of the items. In this case, we're not ordering them out that way. We're ordering them in instance order. That means the ordering in the instance of the ref IDs is the ordering of the sequence, which is a pretty straightforward and easy way to do a sequence. It doesn't require you to put any extra information in the schema or any extra information in the instance. So we have our overall um, sequence that has a title and a description. The description uses the block model, which I talk about elsewhere, and a set of ref IDs that are in the order in the instance that you want the sequence to be. So that's it. That's the, that's the schema. Let's talk a little bit about the instance. And you can see that the instance really just reiterates what's, um, what's in the schema. We have the hetero Audi. That's the, the wrapper tag for the entire sequence. It has a title, a simple hetero sequence, and then a description that has a paragraph and a, uh, an honor list in it and um, followed by a set of ref IDs. Notice in this case, I'm not wrapping the ref IDs in a container like I might otherwise wrap them in a container called ref IDs, the plural wrapping singulars. In this case, it was a little bit redundant to do that and, and I just didn't consider it to be necessary, but I could have done that. I could have wrapped all the ref IDs in a plural container. Okay, and so then we have items. The first two are item underscore something, and the second two are section underscore something. If you look closely at those IDs, they kind of indicate that I have items from two different um, types, some section types and some, um, uh, and some item types. And if you look at the instance for the previous, uh, the previous topic, you'll see that, that that's where this is drawn from. And if you want to look at those items, you know, item underscore get stuck and section underscore leave, for example, you'll find that in the instance that's linked to the previous, uh, the previous topic. So that's it for the instance. The instance is really pre pretty straightforward. The instance and the schema are both really straightforward. And as it turns out, the, uh, the transform, although it, it illustrates some more complex, uh, some more complex content, doesn't really get much more complicated than the schema or the instance does. So let's take a quick look at that, um, at that transform. So we have a for each whack whack hetero Audi, 
What that's doing for us on that very first line is it's setting the current node. So you remember, a for each statement will set the current node. That means that inside that for each statement, we can use relative paths. Okay, any, if any of this vocabulary is, is getting past you, then go back to the to previous parts of the course book and look these things up because at this point you should really have these at your fingertips. So it's using relative paths, it's using the for each to set the current node. Current node and relative path are both vocabulary words that you really should know. Okay, and then right after putting in a, an H1 tag, an HTML H1 tag, it selects the title. So the title is going to be in an H1 tag. The title of what? The title of the hetero sequence. Right, because the hetero sequence is the, or excuse me, the hetero Audi is the current node. It's a relative path, just title, so it puts the title in of the hetero Audi. That's uh, following that, we have marker number one. Excuse me, right following that, we have XSL apply templates, select description. What that does is it takes the description tag and all of its children, goes out looking for templates that match that. And we, haven't, we don't know where those templates are because they're not in this example, but if you look at the sample code for this example, you'll see that we include a block and inline elements XSL file, and in that block and, element, block and inline elements XSL file are all the templates needed to render the things that are in the description. Looking back at the description, we have a P tag, we have a UL tag, we have LI tags. All of the templatage to render those are all, in the, um, are all in a separate template that's called in by that apply templates. Now again, if you don't really understand apply templates, um, you should look at the other topics somewhere else in the course book that explains apply templates to get more of, the, more of the story. Here we're really not about the block and inline model or apply templates. Here we're really mostly about the sequence. So the sequence itself is done in a pretty straightforward, mo uh, a pretty straightforward way, right at marker number one. We have an outer OL wrapper. That OL wrapper wraps the entire list. Notice that we're going to do the um, we're going to do the sequence as a bullet list. That's how I've decided the navigational widget's going to work. It's going to work just as a bullet list of of the items in instance order. So starting right after marker one, we have the OL that establishes the ordered list. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. We have an XSL for each select ref ID. That's going to give us each ref ID in turn. And since it's not followed at marker two, it's not followed by some sort statement. Because it's not followed by a sort statement, they're going to come back in instance order. So that's why I said before, the order of the ref IDs is the order of the sequence is the instance order because we don't have any other way of determining which one's first except which one's first in the instance. And if I do a for each without a sort statement, then they're going to return in the order that they are in the instance. Okay, at marker number two, I set a, um, I set a variable to select the ref ID, and that's just a convenience so that I can, uh, I can refer to the content of that ref ID tag, the ref ID um, element, with a variable named curref ID. Then I start a bullet. Inside the bullet, or in this case it's a number because it's a numbered list, but inside the number, I'm going to put a link. So at this point it might be useful to look, again, look also at the output so we don't get lost. And looking at the output simultaneously with the transform, you can see that first I put the title in this H1 tag, then I rendered the description. The description is a paragraph followed by a bullet list. Then I num render a numbered list. And the numbered list is basically links to each of the items that's being sequenced. And the title, is the, the, the title of the item is the, um, the title of the item is the hot text. And the URL for the item is going to be derived from the ID of the item. So let's look now at marker three. Marker three shows the place where um, uh, where that link is being built, and of course it's a link, so it's an ahref something. The hot text is, is, um, is formed from the title of the item that's being referenced, and so look closely at the, uh, look closely at the select statement, whack whack star where id equals curref id forward slash title. What that does, that complicated bit of XPath, is it finds the item whose id is equal to the ref id that I put inside the instance, and then goes down one more level to find its title. Okay, if you don't understand that, then, then look a little bit later in the course book or elsewhere in the course book for the topic on dereferencing. Um, you're, you, you've, you've likely consumed it by now. If you haven't, you will soon. Okay, and then the um, href is really pretty straightforward. In all cases in this course, we're always going to build our URLs as some form of the ID of the thing that's being pointed to. In this case, it's an internal link, so we have sequence.htm, which is a web page, and inside sequence.htm, there's some place on that page called pound curref ID. And the curref ID is, in one case, it's going to be, uh, what do we call it here? Item underscore get stuck, item underscore wait, section underscore leave, those are all pound tags, those are all internal links inside the HTML page that we're working, that, um, that, these, that these links point to. Okay, so wrapping it all back up, this is a heterogeneous Audi sequence, heterogeneous meaning it'll, it'll index any kind of item, 
Audi meaning the structure is outside the, the items that are being sequenced, and sequence means in the order that the author wants you to consume them. The, the um, instance and schema are really pretty straightforward. They have a title and description for the entire sequence, as well as a, a list of ref IDs. Each one of those ref IDs is going to turn into one of those numbered, numbered lines in the, uh, in the HTML output. So working backwards in the HTML output, we have a numbered list, one, two, three, four, each one consisting of a title. That's the title of the thing that was referenced and uh, a URL, a URL that's derived from the ID of the thing that's referenced, followed above by the description, followed above by the title in an H1 tag. So that's the heterogeneous Audi sequence.